<laughs> Hello, kiddies, it's me, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. And I'm doing a big shout out to my good fiend, Jason, the Solomonster. <laughs> well, Jason, good first name, by the way. Your bro, Jonathan, tells me it's your birthday coming up. Well, the Crypt Keeper would just like to say many more screams come true. And I hope you have a long, healthy life and even a longer, healthier death. Because <laughs> let's face it, you can take it with you. <laughs> you know, my birthday was going so well. I was having what I thought was a pretty good birthday. I was so excited to get a shout out from the Crypt Keeper himself, as you just saw there. I was hoping that WWE would give me the gift of a Universal Championship win. For the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, here on this show. It was such a simple thing, really. I mean, they've done a hell of a job protecting this character, building this character, making people care, doing something out of the box that they've never done before. We've never had a character on television quite like the Fiend before. They had something special in this guy. And when I heard that they put him in a Hell in a Cell championship match this quickly... I thought about it a little bit. I said, well, it feels kind of quick, but you know what? Surely they have to put the title on him. It's too early to beat him. Hell in a cell, you have to have a winner. You can't have a cop-out. And then I saw the poll that WWE tweeted out the other day. And in this poll, they said, how do you think the Hell in a Cell match is going to end on Sunday between Seth Rollins and The Fiend? And they gave three options for potential match finishes. One, pinfall. Two, submission. And the third option was disqualification. And they were rightfully raked over the coals because how the fuck are you going to have a disqualification in a Hell in a Cell match? And then I was reminded about Hell in a Cell last year in 2018. And we had a Hell in a Cell match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. That had Mick Foley as the special guest referee. And do you know how that match ended? With a non-finish. A fuck finish to a Hell in a Cell match. That was pretty stupid. Fast forward a year, surely they're not going to do the same thing twice. Right? They're not going to make the same mistake twice. They can't possibly be this stupid. So we come to the pay-per-view tonight. And what do they do? They give us a disqualification finish inside of the Hell in a Cell. What we saw tonight, it, it, it really, it's very sad to me. Because when this pay-per-view started, we had Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks, which I'm going to get into here, but it almost doesn't even matter anymore. That match was excellent. I said, what a fantastic way to start out this pay-per-view. What a great match this was. Then we went to the tag team match. It was Roman and Brian and Harper and Rowan, and I thought to myself, this is a pretty good tag team match. This is very good. We're off to a great start here on this pay-per-view. Now, granted, we only had four fucking matches promoted going into it, but the first two were pretty damn good. And then when you have a main event like this with a main event finish like this, it absolutely ruins the entire show. Case in point, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm, I'm just going to skip ahead here. I don't even know what the sense is in waiting. Let me show you so far what the Twitter poll is at. Get the fuck out of here with that. Here's the Twitter poll. As of right now, the poll has only been up for a few minutes. 2,200 votes, 9% thumbs up. 91% thumbs down. And do you know why that is? Because once again, WWE has proven that they are a bunch of imbeciles. They don't know what the fuck they are doing. They are handed a pot of gold and they turn it into dog shit. This was the simplest thing in the world. You send the Fiend into the cell with Seth Rollins. 
Seth Rollins, he fights, he's the valiant babyface champion, he throws everything he possibly can at The Fiend, but in the end, it's not enough. It's like Bane beating Batman. Or what was it in the uh, Superman comics? Who was the one who broke uh, Superman's back, Doomsday? This is the easiest story in the world to tell. Rollins is throwing everything he's got at this guy. Every weapon that you could think of, he is throwing everything in his arsenal, every chair, every ladder, every, every wrench. A friggin' mallet was introduced into this match. He is throwing everything he possibly can at this guy. But then he grabs a sledgehammer. Well, that's a bridge too far. Referee calls for the bell. We can't have that. Disqualification in a Hell in a Cell match. And I was so blinded with rage because... This entire pay-per-view was flushed right down the toilet because of one stupid decision. And all you're going to hear about now is how pissed off people are at this pay-per-view. This pay-per-view sucked. This was shit. AEW. You're already here. You're seeing it right now in the chat. You heard it at the end of the pay-per-view. When you have a pay-per-view that goes off the air with chance of AEW and chance of restart the match and booze and bullshit and AEW, what does that tell you? An entire building full of people shat on that main event. Those people were excited when that match started. They wanted to see The Fiend. The Fiend is the biggest star in WWE right now. They wanted to see this man. They wanted to see this man win. And that's the finish that you give people? This is the finish that you give people to your big Hell in a Cell match between Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt? And they'll justify. You know how they're going to justify it? Well... The Fiend got up, and he attacked Rollins. You saw what happened at the end. Rollins was, was spitting up blood. He had the mandible claw on him. He killed him. He was left in a pool of blood. Did you hear the crowd? What were they doing? They were booing. And I tell you right, right now they weren't booing because they were pissed off that Seth Rollins was being beaten up by The Fiend. They don't give a shit about Seth Rollins. They were booing Seth Rollins for 80% of the match. They don't give a fuck about Seth Rollins. That's the biggest problem with Seth Rollins. Nobody gives a fuck about him. He is a terrible champion. That became very obvious tonight. 18 stumps, a pedigree, a ladder, a hammer. He should have dropped a fucking anvil on the guy's head. And it wouldn't have made a difference because The Fiend was the most over thing in the world. And you give people a disqualification finish. I just can't wrap my arm. I mean, I, I said it on the podcast earlier. I said I'm a little concerned. When I saw that poll on their Twitter account, I said that gave me reason to be concerned. But they can't possibly be this stupid. And time and time again, they prove me wrong. And then I'll have people say, Salamazer, how do you fall for it every single time? Why do you let yourself fall for it? Why do you give them the benefit of the doubt in situations like this? Why do you always say, well, they can't be this stupid. They can't be this stupid. They are. They are, they are always proving me wrong. They find ways to get dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. This was an absolute abomination. Whoever made that decision should be relieved of their duties. They should be sent home. They should never be allowed to work for a wrestling promotion again. And if that's Vince McMahon, then kick him in the ass and send him on packing. Because the old man don't have it no more. What a pile of shit at the end of this pay-per-view. And here I thought I was going to come on here and give a positive review for my birthday. This was, going to be a, this was going to be a great way to end my birthday. Big Fiend win here in the main event. Great opening match. You know, you set the expectations for these shows very low. The show had four matches coming into it. And sometimes they blow you away. They put together a card because you don't expect much. And you come away from it thinking, man, that was a goddamn great pay-per-view. Had that main event finish been a little bit different, I probably would have felt that way. The middle of the card... It was more like a third hour of Raw. There, was, there were a, few, a couple good matches there. There were some matches that had no business being on this pay-per-view. It really was not a bad show going into that main event. And that main event changed everything. And that's going to be the story now going forward. That's going to be the narrative now going forward. Tonight, tomorrow morning, it's all going to be about how badly they fucked up that main event. And they know it. Oh, they know it. Believe me, they're in the back. They hear every single chant. That was echoing through that building. And those boos that they got in those AEW chants, they deserved every single one of them. 
how they could put that down on paper and nobody has the fucking balls to stand up and say, you know what, that's not such a great idea. I mean, we're going to have a Hell in a Cell match and have a DQ finish. We have this character, the fans are behind. You're going to end it on a disqualification. I mean, there's going to be a huge backlash, Vince. I mean, you can't be doing that. Nobody had the balls. Nobody had the guts to stand up and say something. Does anybody have any fucking balls in this company? They clearly don't have brains. Do they have balls? Can they borrow Becky Lynch's? She calls herself the man. Unfucking believable. Unfuck two years in a row. Two years in a row, and it just goes to what I've said now for years. There should not be a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. They have completely destroyed the whole concept of Hell in a Cell. Just having its own pay-per-view ruined the entire concept. This nonsense about it's October, it's time for Hell in a Cell. That completely negated the entire purpose of the match in the first place. And what they've now done... The last two years, they've completely bastardized the concept. Nobody will ever buy into a Hell in a Cell finish for one of these main events again. You have Whatever goodwill, whatever trust and faith you have built up with your audience, you have squandered. It is gone. Two years in a row of this bullshit, you end your fucking Hell in a Cell pay-per-view that way. Why even have one? Why even have a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view? Why have a cage? Just have a straight match if you're going to have a disqualification finish. Why bastardize... The Hell in a Cell concept. How could the same company that let Becky and Sasha go out there and have that great match, 20 minutes they had them out there, they were throwing everything at each other. They had the crowd, you, this is awesome, right? This is awesome chance throughout the building. People loved that match. That was a great match. That's what Hell in a Cell should be. That reminded me of the Usos and the New Day a couple of years ago. That was a great match too. This was the opposite. Whatever the fuck opposite of great is, is what that main event was tonight. I don't even know what else to say about it. I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna talk more about it when I get later in the review. I don't even want to talk about the rest of this show now. I have all these notes I put together and I don't even give a shit. Unbelievable. Twitter poll is open. You saw the poll, I put it up. I want you all to vote right now, whatever you're doing. Go on Twitter at Solomonster. The poll is up, it's gonna be up for three days. You give it a thumbs up. You give it a thumbs down. You know what to do. Go vote. Let your voice be heard. Don't think they don't have people scouring all these different accounts on social media to see what the fan reaction is. They don't have to go very far to find out what people thought of this show. I saw people on my Twitter timeline when that show ended. Media people. People who normally are very positive and very complimentary of WWE. Kissing ass. Mm -hmm. Even they were on Twitter saying, oof. That was a bad finish. How can you have a finish like that? When you've lost those people, forget me. Forget me and some of the other podcasters and YouTubers. When you've lost those people, you know you done gone fucked up. I am going to be taking phone calls. It's going to be very interesting. I am going to be taking phone calls in a little bit. And uh, Super Chats are open for those who, uh, who wish to donate. I will uh, try to get to those in a little bit. I know uh, all of you in the chat right now have a lot to say. There is a lot of opinion about this show. Not a lot of positive opinion. I'm going to try to highlight some of the positive stuff just because it's not fair. It's not fair to Becky and Sasha and Roman and Brian and the, and the people that went out there tonight and actually had some great matches. And went out there and busted their ass. I mean, Brian had welts all over his body. Ali had this ugly bruise across his rib cage. I mean, these guys went out there. And they gave it their all. And there were some great matches. And they deserve to be recognized. And I'm going to talk about them. But then I'm going to get back to the main event. And I'm going to, sp I'm going to say the rest of what I have to say. And then I'm going to turn it over to you guys. This is bullshit what they did here tonight. You would think that with competition now. I know it's not uh, you know head to head with Raw or head to head with SmackDown, but with competition now, you would think they'd be more sensitive to stuff like this. Let's not piss off our audience. We actually have something they enjoy. Let's not insult their intelligence. Let's not piss these people off. Let's give them a reason to stay with WWE and not pay attention to these other guys and not chant for these other guys. I guess not. Apparently, that's not important to them. Apparently, they're tone deaf. 
There was one match on the kickoff show. Lacey Evans against Natalia. This was Natty's Revenge. Lacey... I can't even talk about this. I can't even talk about... I don't even care about this. <laughs> I don't even care. I don't even care. I really don't even care. Natty won the match. She got the sharpshooter. She got the immediate tap out. And when Lacey stood up, Natty punched her in the face. Just like Lacey punched her in the face on Raw last week. Cheap shot. One good turn deserves another. And I thought maybe that was going to be the end. But then later on, they announced a last woman standing match. For Raw tomorrow night, where it's going to be Lacey. And it's going to be Natalia. And, you know, last... I'm, I'm so furious right now. <laughs> I I just, you know... Fuck. Seriously. Fuck, man. What in the world are these people thinking? What are these people thinking? The pay-per-view itself... <clears throat> opened with Becky Lynch defending her Raw Women's Championship. Against the boss. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks had the right idea, by the way, when she went home for, what was it, five months? Six months? She knew. She knew how incompetent these people are. This was only the second ever women's Hell in a Cell match. By far the better of the two. I don't think it's much of a stretch for me to sit here right now. And, and if anybody is going to debate me on this, then you're a fucking imbecile. So don't even bother. Clearly, this was the best. I know that's setting a very low bar. That's like, I mean, I'm trying to think of a comparison here. I'm trying to think of an analogy to use. You know, it would be like it would be like saying I took a math test and 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 my friend took a math test, and my friend is terrible at math and he got a twenty, but I got a twenty-two, so I got a better score. It's not really a fair comparison. Actually, I, I you know what, this may have been the best Hell in a Cell match I've seen since that New Day Usos one from two years ago. That's how good this match was. Sasha right away didn't waste any time attacked Becky. They brawled underneath the cell. The cell had not completely been lowered yet. They were outside the cell. They got inside the cell. Sasha hit a meteora off the apron into uh, Becky. There was a ladder propped up against the cell. She hit a meteora. Her knees went right into the ladder. That looked like it sucked. Sasha trapped Becky's left arm in the cell door at one point. She was rocking. She was shaking the door back and forth trying to break her arm. And then she pilmanized her wrist. All of this was being done. To prevent Becky from using the disarm her later in the match. See, so psychology. Something that actually makes sense here. So, the spot of the match, the spot of the night, really, was Becky hitting a running drop kick off the apron to Sasha Banks, who was sitting in a chair that was propped up on two kendo sticks that Sasha had stuck in the cage earlier. And just to give you kind of a, for those of you who are listening live, a little visual here, because it's, it's better to show you you see there the kendo sticks are propped up, chair on top of it. Very unique. I can't say that I've ever seen anything like uh, like this before in a Hell in a Cell match. So I could appreciate them uh, being creative. There was a lot of creativity here in this match. A lot more creativity than we saw at the end of this fucking show. Maybe they should let Sasha and Becky book the promotion. How about that? They should have let Sasha and Becky book The Fiend and uh, Seth Rollins. Had I known that that was going to be the finish, I would have said that Becky and Sasha should have headlined the show. 2020, of course. Who knew? But that was easily the spot of the night. That running drop kick into Sasha, who was sitting up, elevated in the air on that chair. That was awesome. That was awesome. There was a meteora by Sasha off the ropes onto Becky that put Becky through a table, only for a near fall. Sasha locked the bank statement on Becky using a kendo stick. Becky slipped under the bottom rope to the floor, broke the hold. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward here because I'm just, I'm beside myself here. But just fast forwarding a little bit here. Sasha cannot put this woman away. She is grabbing about 50 chairs out from underneath the ring. Why do they need so many chairs under the ring? I mean, are they worried that a wedding is going to break out? Is there going to be a fucking bar mitzvah? Why do they have so many chairs under the ring? So now they have a pile of chairs in the ring. Becky Lynch catches Sasha up top. And she gives her a Bexploder off the top onto the chairs and immediately transitions into the disarm her. 
Sasha, she's grabbing Becky's hair, she's clawing and reaching for the chair, she can't get it. She has no choice but to tap out. And Becky Lynch is still your Raw Women's Champion after 23 minutes of mayhem. An excellent match. The best main roster women's match, I would say, all year in WWE. Uh, I would have put the title on Sasha, but my guess is that she has to be moving to SmackDown on Friday. Otherwise, why wouldn't they put the championship on her? If she's not moving to SmackDown, I think this finish was a mistake. But the match itself, I thought, was awesome. So then we had Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan in a tornado tag team match. There are no tags in this match. All four men in the ring at the same time. Winner uh, is determined via pinfall or submission only. Boy, it would have been nice. You know, think about this. I just realized something here. We had a tornado tag team match on this show. Not a hell in a cell, right? No cage, no cell. Just a fucking tag team match. Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan against these two guys. Pinfall or submission only. These motherfuckers had pinfall or submission only rules in a tag team match, but a hell in a cell match, you have a disqualification? I thought this was a very good match. Uh, Adding the tornado rules was very smart. I think it just made it more chaotic. They were able to do more. They had more toys to play with, so uh, I like that. Harper and Rowan cleared off all three announce tables that were at ringside. And they took Roman out with a piece of the barricade, so now he's out. Brian's all by himself. They're going to powerbomb Daniel Bryan through the announce table. Brian turns a powerbomb attempt into a Hurricane Rana, sends Harper flying off the table. Roman Reigns reappears. He runs across the first two announce tables, spears Eric Rowan through the third. Awesome. Great spot. Inside the ring, Brian goes for a Rana up top on Harper. Harper holds on to him and off the top rope, power bombs the shit out of this guy just for a near fall. So Rowan is still down outside the ring. He's in the debris of the table. He's out of the picture. Roman Reigns comes flying in with a Superman punch to Harper. We've got the running knee by Daniel Bryan, spear by Roman Reigns, finishes the job. And so Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan pick up the win. Now Bryan extends his hand to Roman after the match for a handshake. Roman's a little hesitant at first and when he goes to shake his hand brian pulls away but only because he wanted a hug he wanted a hug instead and so roman obliged there was no low blow there was no turn from daniel bryan there was nothing everything was on the up and up i thought this was a fine tag team match the question now is you know where are they going with roman reigns and daniel bryan i i don't know you know what happens now with luke harper and eric rowan I don't know. I feel like everything is sort of in limbo until we get past this draft uh, coming up on Friday. May I propose a move here for the draft? I mean, it is my show. I guess I can do that. I propose this move for the WWE draft coming up this Friday. I propose that they draft Vince McMahon and the entire Monday Night Raw creative team. I propose that they draft them to the local indie in Nashua, New Hampshire. They can book the territory there. And in exchange, I believe in Nashua, there's a little town that has a cat as its mayor. I propose that we draft the cat to the WWE creative team. We appoint them to the lead position, lead writer, if you will. And we let the cat book WWE shows going forward. That's what I propose. Because you know the cat would do a much better job. Cats don't fuck around. I used to have a cat. Cats don't like anybody. They don't fight. They get right to the point. They know what they want. I have a lot of respect for cats. I have no respect for these people. So everything is in limbo right now until the draft takes place. Who the hell knows what's going to happen. Let me check uh, Super Chats real quick. Thank you, by the way. We have over 3,100 people uh, commiserating in the chat right now. Uh, I just want to check the uh, Super Chat tally just to uh, show some love to... Anybody who may have donated so well, we got a whole bunch of people here who have, uh, oh, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm just going to run, th- wow, geez, I, oh boy. There's a lot of people in here tonight. A lot of people in here tonight. But shout out to uh, First Time Online, Sean Blanford, thank you very much, SoCal Chris. Space Ghost, coast to coast, love Space Ghost. Uh, I, w- I would say that Space Ghost should book SmackDown, and the cat can book Raw. 
And uh, I'll get to uh, more of these Super Chats in a little bit. Uh, we move on here. This was the part of the show where they realized, hey, we have a fucking pay-per-view tonight. We probably should add a few matches to this card. Because, you know, they blew their load on the season premiere of Raw, NXT. we got to compete. We've got to load it up. we got to have a takeover-type show. And then you had Friday Night Smackdown, the big debut on Fox. And then it's like, oh, shit, we have a pay-per-view on Sunday. So let's add a few matches. And one of those matches was Randy Orton against Ali. And this was, here's the setup for the match. Ali is in the back. He's cutting a promo. Randy Orton interrupts. Randy Orton says, yeah, you know, you had momentum. You know what kills your momentum? I did. I stomped out your momentum, which he did. Which he did. He stomped on Ali's eye. They had a match on SmackDown back in February. Ali was uh, taken out of the Elimination Chamber match. And taking his place in that Elimination Chamber, Kofi Kingston. And thus, Kofi Mania was born. And then Brock Lesnar said, I wipe my ass with your Kofi Mania. So Randy Orton is ragdolling Ali into the ring post. And Jesus Christ, you got to see this. I wish I had uh, snapped a photo that I could flash here. But he had this really nasty bruise right across. I mean, it was a big one, too. Right across his rib cage. So hopefully he doesn't have any broken ribs. But to his credit... I mean, whether he's injured or not, he kept going. He didn't skip a beat, did Ali. Uh, he hit a tornado DDT to Randy Orton. He went for the 450. No water in the pool. Crash and burn. Orton tried for the RKO, but Ali did this weird handstand to reverse out of it. Went out to the apron. He dove in through the ropes. And in so doing, when he rolled up on Randy Orton, you know what came next. Orton caught him for the RKO. That was a beautiful RKO for the win. And uh, I love the look on Orton's face. He's just sort of looking at Ali like, you know, he, he's paying respect. He's kind of shaking his head. He's like, all right, all right, yeah, it's tougher than I thought. So he actually, even though he beat him, that was, I guess, his way of putting over Ali. But you had to really pay close attention to see it. Uh, but I did pick up on that. Yeah, the match was fine. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross against Asuka and Kyrie Sane for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Michael Cole openly said of this draft coming up uh, that it really is a battle between Fox and USA Network. Fox wants its own roster. USA Network wants its own roster on Mondays. So they're actually pitting the networks in storyline. They're pitting the networks against each other, which I think is kind of an interesting way of going about doing it, uh, as opposed to having dueling you know, general managers who were so fucking played out. We do not need GMs on Raw and SmackDown. William Regal on NXT is fine. We rarely see him. We only see Regal when there's a need to see Regal. That's the way a general manager should be. Uh, so if that's the way they want to play this, then fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Apparently the Kabuki Warriors are heels now. I I missed that memo. I mean, I'm fine with them being heels. I'm heel Asuka, hey, sign me up. But it would have been nice for them to actually explain why all of a sudden they're the villains here in this uh, situation. Asuka... Finish came when Asuka spit green mist in Nikki Cross's face, followed by a head kick for the win, and the Kabuki Warriors are your new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. I'm a mark for the mist. Uh, that's some old school Kana shit right there from Japan. Uh, I like that finish a lot. The one thing I hated, and it wasn't exclusive to this match, because this was also the case with Corbin when he came out, I absolutely detest these WWE theme music mashups that they do where they take one person's theme and they play it, and then they just cut to the other person's theme, and then they cut back to the other theme. I hate that. I It's just awful, awful shit. It's lazy. One song. Either make a new song for them, or use one song. This mashup shit has got to go. But that's a minor criticism. Asuka now is a champion again in WWE. The challenge is going to be finding opponents for them, because they don't have much of a division right now. What does the women's tag team division look like? You've got Alexa and Nikki. The Iconics? I mean, <laughs> give me a break. Who else is there? The well runs dry at that point. They don't have anybody to face. So I'm happy that they won, but now I'm looking at this and I'm going, eh. You know, the draft is going to be an opportunity for them to call some people up. That's the only way they're going to be able to boost that division. Otherwise, what the hell does it mean? You won a title and you have nobody to defend it against. Well, who gives a shit? So they're going to have to find people for them. And this is where the show morphed into the third hour of Monday Night Raw. Things were going well, and then they just collapsed. 
We had Braun Strowman and the Viking Raiders against AJ Styles and the OC. This was every six-man tag team Raw TV match you've ever seen. Absolutely nothing special. And to make things worse, you know, for all the uh, talk about the main event, and there's going to be a lot of talk about the main event all week long, they did a similar bullshit finish here in this match. They went with the old disqualified for kicking too much ass finish. With the OC ganging up on Strowman, and the referee threw the match out. Because Braun Strowman, you know, when three people gang up on a guy as big as Braun Strowman, the poor guy can't defend himself, so we have to disqualify the other people. Very lame. The only reason this match even existed was for the spot at the end where Styles went for the phenomenal forearm, and Strowman knocked him into the middle of next week. In midair, he caught him with a right hand. I mean, they kept pushing the whole Tyson Fury thing ad nauseum here on this show. Tyson Fury's going to show up on Raw tomorrow night. They're going to shoot some kind of angle, most likely to do a match, maybe in Saudi Arabia. Sweet Saudi money for, please God, no more. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what they're going to do tomorrow night. But this is Big Show Mayweather Redux. That's all this is. Right down to, you know, the Big Show with the whole WMD balling up his fist. They're doing the exact same thing with Strowman. You know, if, but at least if you're going to copy an angle, make it better. Well, tomorrow night, we'll see. Maybe they can make it better. Big Show Mayweather was a pretty hot angle. It's going to be hard to to top that one, but they'll they'll try tomorrow night. I don't have a lot of faith in this crew, and I'm not talking about the talent when I say that. We had Chad Gable. Yes, his name is fucking Chad. His name is not Shorty, you buffoons. Against King Corbin. Crowd chanted STD at Corbin. Thanks, Rock. That was the one thing about The Rock I, I did not like on Friday. I, I said on the podcast earlier, I actually was very entertained, largely, but the one part of that Rock segment from SmackDown that I hated was the STD shit. So now we get to hear STD every week. I think these people who write these shows might have STDs that have gone undiagnosed. And what's happened now is that it's rot- besides their crotch, it's now rotting out their brains. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe Vince McMahon caught syphilis years ago and d- didn't know it. And it traveled up his spine into his brain, and these little brain-eating amoebas are just eating away at his brain. Maybe that's what's going on here. A little bit of chlamydia, maybe? So Corbin takes the mic, and officially christened Chad Gable Shorty Gable. So the Shorty G thing that was going around all the wrestling news websites, I think Meltzer may have been the first to report it, I don't remember. Turns out to be true. A month later, but it turns out to be true. So they really are going with this uh, shorty shit. Graves would not shut up the entire match with this shorty stuff. I wanted to put him in his own shallow grave. I was happy enough we got to see the chaos theory from from, uh, Gable. We got to see the Gable moonsault right into the ankle lock. Corbin got to the ropes. Corbin grabs his royal scepter. He tries to hit Gable with it. Referee stops him. Gable rolls up Corbin for the win. I don't know what's accomplished by having these constant roll-up wins, slip on a banana peel, fluky BS finishes. But he won. He won. So that's a plus, I guess. But uh, the match itself, it was a match. Later on backstage, Corbin ended up laying him out anyway. So it's not even like Gable... Gable didn't even get through the night with uh, his head held high. He got left laying. So what else is new? Bailey and Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Before the start of the match... Tamina, remember her? Yeah, she's still employed. Tamina, who earlier in the night won her very first title in WWE. Nine years working for WWE, and she now has the 24-7 title. So when she goes into the Hall of Fame, and you know she will, she could talk about that very first night that she won her very first championship in WWE. And it was the 24-7 title. She ran out into the crowd. This was earlier in the night. So the match is about to start between Bailey and Charlotte. And there's a distraction in the crowd. It's Tamina. Because she's a champion. Well, she has no idea what to do. This woman has never held the title in her life. The only belt she's ever had holds up her pants. She doesn't know what to do. So she's in the crowd. She's running away from somebody. Truth and Carmella are chasing after her. Tamina grabs Funaki. From his post at one of the international announce tables. He wants to use him as a human shield. Funaki then assumes a fighting stance. He's going to fight our truth And he didn't get the chance to. He got shoved aside. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see him do, uh, do much of anything. Carmella kicks Tamina in the head. She lets Truth get the pin. And our truth is now, they said, a 
20-time 24-7 champion. However brief it was, anything that results in Tamina winning a title to me is an automatic fail. So the match itself, by the way, there was a SmackDown Women's Championship match that was supposed to begin here. The uh, story of the match was Charlotte working over Bailey's leg, working over her knee. Uh, she did go for her moonsault. I made a comment on Twitter. I said, you know, we saw Lacey Evans hit a beautiful moonsault. We saw Chad Gable hit a beautiful moonsault. Charlotte, please, for the love of God, don't do it. Don't do it. You don't have to do it. Her moonsault, again, it's, it's the form that she takes. She lands on her feet every single time. She was a gymnast in her younger days. I'm sure that has something to do with it. I've never seen her land a moonsault, what I would consider, seeing everybody else do it the right way. I've never seen her land a moonsault the right way. She does the corkscrew outside. That looks pretty cool. I'm not talking about the corkscrew. I'm talking about the regular moonsault in the ring. When you have two, three, four other people in the company who do it better than you, it's time to abandon the move and let them do it. Why would you do something and look inferior at it? So she couldn't help herself. Everybody's got to hit their spots, right? Everybody's got to hit their big spots in all their matches. So she hit the moonsault. Uh, not really, though. But she she tried to hit the moonsault. Bailey used an inside cradle for a near fall. Bailey was trying to use the ropes, trying to get the uh, the pin, and the referee caught her. And Charlotte nailed Bailey with a boot, locked on the figure eight, and Bailey had no choice but to tap out. And Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. She is indeed a 10-time Women's Champion. Oh, there's the sloth. There's what the sloth thinks right now on your screen. Clearly, he's very excited by this uh, Charlotte Championship win and the booking at the end of this pay-per-view. Always good to see the sloth here on this show. Hope he uh, has a good night. He'll have a better night than I will, I'll tell you that. So Bailey threw a hissy fit, and she cried when the match was over. Basically what all of us are doing now because of the end of this pay-per-view, but at least we have good reason for it. And so I don't know where Bailey goes from here. I don't know if she'll stay on SmackDown now. If if Maybe now she'll go full heel. Maybe that's the story. Maybe the story is that she was trying to be a good person. She was trying to set an example for the kids, and she got fucked, and now she's had enough. And now we're truly going to get to see the dark side of Bailey. Or maybe they'll just forget all of this and... Nothing will happen. That's the WWE way of doing things. You see the uh, phone number on your screen. I'm going to be taking calls uh, here in a little bit. You see the number 989-282-SOLO. 989-282-SOLO. Let me just take a quick scan of what's going on in the chat. We got 3,600 30, people. What's going on, everybody? It's my birthday. What a shitty way for my birthday to end. But you know what? I take that back. This is actually a great way for my birthday to end because all of you are here. All of you are going to help try to wash the sour taste of the end of this pay-per-view out of my mouth, because now I have to talk about this match. So we move on here to the main event. And by the way, while you're here, if you would give the video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. That would be so kind of you. Seth Rollins against The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, inside Hell in a Cell for the Universal Championship. We had red lighting for this match. This was the Kane lighting. Remember when Kane first debuted all those years ago? And his first, I think his first, I don't know, a couple of big pay-per-view matches, they darkened the arena and he wrestled in this red light. And I thought at the time, I said, this is very obnoxious. This is very annoying. I don't like this. I can't say I'm still sold on this. I'm not. I'm still not a big fan of, of the whole red light. But honestly, you know, for the Fiend character, it works. Uh, it makes it a little bit creepier. Bray hits Sister Abigail early in this match. He hits Sister Abigail on Seth into the side of the cell. He is kicking ass. He looks great, right? Everyone is clearly, they, they love the Fiend. It's not surprising. We all knew, I think. It was pretty obvious. It wouldn't be very long before this guy would turn babyface. <laughs> uh, whether he wants to or not, believe me, he's going to be the biggest babyface. Maybe not after tonight. I should take that back. He could have been the biggest babyface in this company. Hopefully they can uh, wash the stink off him after what happened tonight. But Rollins is doing everything he can. Every move that he can think of in his arsenal. I think everything, I don't think he hit the Phoenix Splash. Maybe everything except that. He hit a Frog Splash to the Fiend off the top rope through a table. Fiend gets right back up. Rollins hits a stomp. 
Fiend gets right back up. Sister Abigail. But Rollins kicks out. So then Bray grabs a giant mallet from underneath the ring. Very similar to the one that killed Ramblin' Rabbit in the Firefly Funhouse. He hits Rollins in the midsection with the mallet. Rollins fights back. He stomps the Fiend onto the mallet. So they're back in the ring now. Hits a stomp. Hits a second stomp. Hits a third stomp. Not enough. The Fiend is stirring. He hits a pedigree. Kicks out. The Fiend kicks out. I'm sure Triple H loved that. He kicks out of the pedigree. The crowd, by the way, every single time Rollins would hit one of these stomps, just to show you what a great universal champion Seth Rollins is, every single time that he would hit a stomp, the crowd would boo. Louder and louder and louder. He hit the pedigree, and you would think that Seth Rollins was the biggest heel in the business. That's how much they have bought into this story that Seth Rollins, oh my God, Seth Rollins is up against the toughest challenge of his career. We have to rally behind the champion. Burn it down, everybody. Burn it down. Let's burn it down and beat the Fiend. Nobody gave a fuck about Seth Rollins. All they wanted to do was see the Fiend beat this guy one, two, three. That's what they paid their ticket to see. This was a one-match show. You had one job to do. People used to make fun of Kalisto all the time. Every time he would botch, or Sin Cara, not Kalisto. Well, Kalisto too, I guess, but Sin Cara. You had one job, Sin Cara. You had one job. Yeah, WWE, you had one job. That's all you had to do. You had one job. And you fucked it up. So, you could see where this was going. Rollins was not getting any love out there. And the crowd also was getting very restless. So, as this was going on, this was going on for way too long. I don't know if they just had time to kill or what the deal was here. But, uh, they were getting very restless with what was going on. So, Rollins hits four more stomps. And, I, I will say this about Seth. If the stomp is his move, then you should protect the move. So, if you hit the Fiend with two stomps, three stomps, even four stomps... All right, he's the fiend, right? He's like this supernatural being, almost. I lost track after a while of how many fucking stomps this guy hit. He literally may have hit a dozen or more stomps in this match. I don't know how anybody could take that move seriously in the future. So he's hitting more stomps. Doesn't work. He grabs a chair from the outside. He stands over the fiend. Chair shot to the head, or they wanted you... They, the way they angled it, it looked like he hit him in the head with the chair. And again, Wyatt kicks out. So he lays the chair across his face. He grabs a ladder. Smashes the ladder into the chair. Again, Bray kicks out. All the hardware. He's grabbing ladders and a toolbox. And he's emptying the toolbox. Everything he can find. Everything he can get his hands on. He is emptying it on top of Bray Wyatt. And then he grabs the sledgehammer. I believe it was a sledgehammer. I, I'm, I'm so, like, all over the... It was a sledgehammer and not the mallet, right? You'll, you'll tell me if I'm wrong in the chat. I'm pretty sure I saw a sledgehammer. I don't even know. I'm, I'm seeing red right now. But he grabs a sledgehammer. Referee is telling him, don't do it. Don't do it. I thought Rollins was going to hit the referee, and that was going to be the, uh, the bullshit finish. We were going to get a no contest. But instead, he uses the hammer, and the referee immediately calls for the bell. And they rained all of these chants down upon these people as quickly as you could just, if you blinked, you heard the AEW chants. A few minutes later, loud restart the match chants. Once the Fiend got back up, because he did, the Fiend popped up. He put the Mandible Claw on Rollins. This was their way of getting out of the match. That's all this was. This was their way of getting out of this match. They booked themselves into a corner and they didn't know what to do. You cannot tell me that when they conceived of this match... That this was the original finish that they intended. They actually thought, you know what? We have to do a Hell in a Cell match so we can do some bullshit DQ finish. No, they saw how popular The Fiend was. They wanted to put him in a main event. They wanted to sell tickets because they can't sell tickets to save their life anymore at some of these shows. They've got to paper the shows. They've got to block off. They've got to tarp off half the goddamn arena. Well, The Fiend, he's over. They've struck gold with this guy. So what do we do? Let's put him in the championship match. We'll sell tickets that way. But then they realize, well, we have to have a finish here. We don't want to put the title on him. So let's figure out how we can get out of this match. This was their great finish. This was their great idea. 
So at first I heard the AEW chants. And, you know, they weren't loud, loud, but they were audible. And then they happened again. So for anybody who wanted to turn around and say, well, I didn't hear, because I get that sometimes. I'll, I'll say, oh, they chanted this. And I'll have that one WWE defender who gets very upset when you say anything negative about the company. Well, I didn't hear it. Maybe it was only a small little group of people. I didn't hear it. Well, then you're fucking deaf. Can't say that this time. There were loud AEW chants, and I'm sure Vince was just beaming with pride listening to that. I still remember all those years ago, the stories about how pissed he was when they were chanting TNA, when they had Trump and Rosie in the ring, and Vince was sitting at ringside. He was showered in TNA chants. So I'm sure they loved hearing those AEW chants in the back. And you know what? They probably loved it so much, I would encourage all of you, if you have your ticket to go to a WWE show, if you're going to go to Raw tomorrow night, you know what? Let them know that you love AEW. Let them know that you love MLW. Let them know that you love Impact. Let them know that you love the NWA. Let them know that you love New Japan. Let them know that you love ROH. Let them know that you love that little uh, indie promotion I mentioned in Nashua, New Hampshire. You know, the city where the cat used to be the mayor. That may be the only way to get their attention. So, Wyatt... I guess in their mind, we'll make Wyatt look strong by having him put the mandible claw on Rollins. Rollins will bite down on a blood capsule. It was it was ridiculous because if you looked, it was almost like there was a faucet. There was so much blood. It was ridiculous. And people were not having sympathy for Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins was being murdered. This was a live murder on television. The fans didn't give a shit. They were still pissed that the match ended on a disqualification. Rollins' blood is pouring out of his mouth. It's almost like a parody of a horror movie. Like if you would watch Scary Movie, it's meant for laughs. That's how this came across at the end. And then they have the, the spooky effects with The Fiend. They zoom in on the, on the Fiend and all people are doing are booing. And my only hope in all of this is that people understand that this is not Bray's fault. And it's not even Seth's fault. I don't think either one of them had anything to do with this. I would be very disappointed to find out that Bray had any sort of creative input into the finish of this match. I would be very disappointed to hear that. I would be surprised. So I hope people don't hold it against him. I hope they don't hold it against them. If you are upset with the finish of this pay-per-view, there is only one person who you can hold responsible for that. Well, there's two people. I take that back. There's two people. The first person is Vince McMahon. Because the buck stops with him. That's what everybody says, right? I, 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 look, I don't work for the company. I'm not sitting in the gorilla position. I don't claim to be an insider. But everybody who does interviews, who works for that company, Triple H, everybody, they all say the same thing. The buck stops with Vince. The buck stops with Vince. Okay, fine. The buck stops with Vince. So he's person number one. The other person is blame yourself. Blame yourself. Because you're partially responsible too. I'm partially responsible. Because we enable it by subscribing to the network, buying tickets to go to these shows, buying the merch, because we're wrestling fans. But all it does is it enables them. So we all have to accept some level of responsibility for this. That's what I mean. It, you know... The best thing that we could possibly do, if you're really upset about this, is let your voices be heard. They love their social media. They love to talk every week about how many followers they have and how social they were for this show. Start a hashtag. That'll get their attention. Flood their social media accounts. Flood the comments on their YouTube pages. Send them an email. Send them a tweet. And go to the shows if you have your ticket. And you could be loud and let them know exactly what you think about them. If we don't have some kind of fan rebellion in the building tomorrow down on Raw, I'm going to be very upset. Like I'm talking like night after WrestleMania type shit. I'm going to be very... Uh, there's one person in the chat who just said class action lawsuit. Let, let's not get carried away now. Let's not get carried away now. But that's the best, that's the best advice I can give. Yeah, there's a lot of very upset people right now because they were following the story and they were following the character and they were into it and they were excited about it. This was a one match pay-per-view and the one match that they had to do the right thing in, they dropped the ball. And that's why you're not going to hear about Sasha and Becky. 
And you're not going to hear about Roman and Brian and anything good that happened on the show. It is now all overshadowed by one stupid decision in the main event. And before I go to the calls, let me just be clear about something. It's not just, the, oh, the person I wanted to win didn't win. You have a Hell in a Cell match and a disqualification finish. That is inexcusable. It is not a match that is designed to facilitate a disqualification. It is a fucking insult to your audience. On a show where you have a tag team match with tornado rules where there are no disqualifications. When two people are locked inside of a giant cell... It's pinfall or it's submission. When weapons are allowed and you have a guy using kendo sticks, steel chairs, ladders, a mallet, a fucking mallet. Are you kidding me? And you're going to tell me, well, there's disqualifications in this match. Disqualify yourself, please, from ever booking any of these shows ever again. I've had enough of this show. Let's go back to the poll, shall we? Let's see where we are with this Twitter poll. I'm very anxious to see where the Twitter poll is now. Well, there you go. I mean, need I say more? Almost 3,600 votes. Has it even been an hour? It's been an hour. 9% thumbs up, 91% thumbs down. And this rivals some of the worst polls that I've ever seen for some of the worst pay-per-views that this company has ever done. This this rivals that Backlash poll from that show where Jinder Mahal became WWE champion. What was that? Backlash uh, 2018, I think. This will go down. Not as this believe it or not, this is not the worst. This is close. But this this one isn't even the worst. But this will go down as one of the worst most lopsided polls that I have ever done for WWE. Before we uh, get to your calls, I do have to show some love to the ridge because they have been uh, very good to us in the past and uh, then we're going to get to your calls and it's going to be very interesting but before we do that let me just mention real quick here tonight's review is sponsored by the ridge and uh, these slim wallets fit very comfortably into your pocket they take up hardly any space you know, i've got a couple of them myself they have wallets in aluminum burnt titanium Carbon fiber, and now a brand new one. They have introduced their new Damascus Steel Wallet, which is... Uh, cr Actually, this thing is pretty cool. If you uh, look at the graphic there, that one on top, that's the new one. That's the new Damascus Steel. It's like a forge welding technique, and they blend slices of iron and steel together. The metal then is drawn out. It's a whole process. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, so you can get your wallet with your choice of a cash strap, money clip, whatever you prefer. Uh, obviously, both of them are going to keep your cash secure. Your cash isn't going to go anywhere. You get a lifetime guarantee as part of the product as well. It is guaranteed for life, like the NWO. So uh, right now, you can get 10% off your first Ridge wallet, free shipping all over the world. Just go to ridge.com slash Solomonster and use the promo code Solomonster at checkout. That's ridge.com slash Solomonster. Get 10% off right now, courtesy... Of the Solomonster sounds off. All right, we're going to hit the phones. There's the phone number, 989-282-SOLO. I want to hear from you guys what you thought of the pay-per-view here tonight. All the lines are all jammed up, so I'm going to try to get to as many of you as I possibly can. We're going to start here. And, and please, I know we had a little issue last time with uh, people not hearing the callers, so if you don't hear them, let me know. But we've got Travis in Ohio. Travis, you're on the air. Travis, all monster. What's going on, Travis? What what did you think of this wonderful pay per view here tonight? Before I give you my thoughts, um, Ali versus Orton. Um, according to the description, that was supposed to be Ali and Nakamura for the IC title. Is Nakamura hurt or something? No, nope, uh, that was never announced. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, that was never announced. That was rumored. People thought that if they're going to add matches, that would be one. They assumed, and when you assume, you look like a fool. Not you. I'm just talking in general. So no, that was never official. Yeah, man, dude, that was just fucking stupid. What they did with the cell, dude. That was probably with the tear in my eye. The worst Hell in a Cell match I've ever seen. Woo! Well, it was pretty bad. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Listen, I don't know if it was the worst. I'd have to... I mean, there's been some uh, some bad ones before. It's it's up there. It's definitely up there. And it, it sucks because this could have been... It, it could have been a completely different night had things just gone in a different way. The red lighting and the, and, and the Fiend taking all this abuse and bouncing back and people were like... 
they were into it. The way they were reacting and, and Rollins with this look on his face like the fear of God has been put into him. They were going down the right road and then it's like they took a wrong turn and whee, off the cliff they went. And it's amazing how it just completely ruins. It completely negates everything else that happened on the pay-per-view. It's, it's, it's amazing. Let's go to John in Jacksonville. You're on the air. What's going on, Jason, my friend? What's going on, John? Oh, oh man. Uh, WWE has a very funny way of, of reeling you in, and then you get a nice shit sandwich at the end, as if I could quote you, my friend. Nice shit sandwich. Oh, yeah. It tastes good, doesn't uh, it? <laughs> uh, they got, I mean, it was like the week-long build. They had you with Monday Night Raw, and then the... the book. Let's see the pattern. Well, Monday Night Raw had that same kind of theme with Lana and Lashley at the end. SmackDown was you gotta you gotta do good for for the for the for the network. So oh they, my god! You know, like you, said. I, you know, I completely I, I got to cut you off there, but I I completely forgot about that. I'm glad you brought that up. So in a week where we get that storyline with Lana and Bobby Lashley, and I had somebody uh, tweet me or email me earlier, and he's like, you know. Uh, this is the kind of thing that people want to see. If you go on YouTube, it's got a few million views. You know, a lot of things have a few million views. The Cain Velasquez video with Brock Lesnar from SmackDown is up to five or six million views. But I love this idea that, well, the YouTube clip got, you know, two million views. And so, therefore, you're wrong. It was a good angle. Because clearly people are interested in what's going to happen next. How do you know that? Raw tomorrow night hasn't happened yet. We haven't seen the follow-up. We haven't seen the numbers. How can you say that? Because a YouTube video they put on their channel, which showed one guy kissing another guy's wife, did you not think that was going to do good numbers? So that makes it a good angle. That makes it great uh, professional wrestling storytelling. These two characters that we haven't seen on television in months show up, and Lana walks out and she's kissing another man and Rusev just stands there looking like a fucking idiot. Oh, that's a great angle. Wow, geez, great storytelling there. Yeah, so in a week where they gave us that angle, they also gave us this finish on the pay-per-view. This is going to go down as one of the most embarrassing weeks of creative in the history of WWE. And think about the ground that that covers. Think of a lot of the awful stories that we have seen over the years on Monday Night Raw and on some of these shows, and they had these two things take place on television within the same week. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, this is the new WWE, right? This is the, the, the brand new WWE direction. Aren't you happy? Aren't you excited about the new direction of WWE? Aren't you, aren't you excited about the draft coming up now? Didn't this pay-per-view make you excited? Yeah, it made you excited to go play in traffic. Let's take another call. Let's go to Jordan in Manhattan. Jordan, you're on the air. Hey, uh, what's up, Jason? This is Jordan. Um, happy birthday. Thank you very much. And um, <laughs> that was an interesting show right there. Uh, wow. Oh, that's, that's one word for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the I actually watched the whole thing, and every time there was something stupid in that main event, I was like, I cannot hear Cannot wait to hear what you say, because, wow. <laughs> Is there a question and in here? So, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, what would you do going forward with the top titles? <laughs> I wouldn't do what Who they did you, tonight, like, I'll tell you that. that that's that's uh, my first answer. I wouldn't do what they did tonight. Yeah, that was... All right, thank you, Jordan. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta move on. But thank you very much for calling in and the birthday wishes. I really appreciate it. We gotta move on here because we've got uh, so many people waiting here in the uh, in the queue. I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can before we uh, wrap things up here. Jay, and then I'll have one more word here at the end before I wrap up. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. Jay in Virginia, you're on the air. Hey man, what's going on, Jason? How you doing, man? Uh, I was doing well until I watched the end of this pay per view. Yeah, I just kind of had a statement more so than a question. All I wanted to say was, see, I'm a DC sports fan. So regarding that and the outcome of tonight and just the overbooking and that and everything else, all I can really say is, did tonight suck? Did today suck? Oh, yes. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Thank you, Jay. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm fit to be tied tonight. 
I, I'm just letting you know now. I am, I am in no mood. So uh, if you're going to call in, just make sure you got a good question. I know one person who will probably have a good question. If he doesn't, I'm definitely going to cut him off. Uh, I believe we have a, a certain someone here on the air. Someone, are you there? I guess not. He's not there. No, is it, can you hold on a second here? Noah. Are you talking about me? Sir? I am talking about you. Finally, where, where, where are you, man? You said you wanted to come on and talk about something, and then I don't hear you. Well, I was screening calls, but I'm back. And um, happy birthday, Solid Monster sounds off. Yeah, what's so happy about it? <laughs> I, I, not much. Uh, let me tell you. You know, this is going to go down, I have to up? say. This was going, this was going along well. Uh, you saw the shout out from the right. Crypt Keeper that I got, and I got a lot of very nice messages and everything. And, you know, birthdays can be one of those things that are very depressing because you're one day closer to death. So it's kind of weird that people celebrate birthdays in the first place because it's like, what the fuck are you even celebrating? You're one step closer to being dead. But I was having a good day. And then I had to sit down to watch this pay-per-view. And it started out great. And I was in a great mood. And I said, all we got to do is get to midnight. If we can get to midnight, that's one complete day. This will go down as one of the better birthdays I've had in a while. And then I saw that, as that other person just said, that shit sandwich in the main event. And it just completely ruined the whole thing for me. So now my birthday, this is going to be one of the worst birthdays I've had in a long time. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, know, I do know what to say. Uh, Ryback, Braun Strowman, uh, and now you can add uh, the Fiend Bray Wyatt, right? Just They, they tee him up. Uh, I didn't hear your comments earlier, so you, you, know, you might have said something to this effect, but I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> you weren't listening to my comments. You, you're screening calls. You're on hold. You should be listening to me the entire time. Isn't the audio coming through? I was listening. I was listening to the callers, the wonderful callers. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Maybe you should for, be uh... listening to me. All right. Listen. <laughs> what, what is the main point that you wanted to make here? Did you talk about, did you by any chance talk about the stomp? and how they fucking obliterated. Oh Not only did they obl obl obliterate the fiend Bray Wyatt, but they obliterated the stomp in one fucking match. As a matter of fact, I did. I talked extensively about that. Okay, good, because uh, I'm sorry. I'm a, little bit, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted here by screening, but I have to... I, I mean, I'm going to cancel the WWE Network. I'm going, to, I'm going to voice my opinion. You're right. You're right, because we're all fools here if we don't do something about it. And, and I think, I think something has to be done, you know, it, it, this is insane. It, well, how many chances are we going to give this company? Well, people can, uh, at least if nothing else, they could always rely on me being here to talk about this shit so they don't have to watch, you know, I, I, I'm yeah. worried about you actually. You're worried about me. I'm worried about me too. Yeah. After this show. I don't think, I think you should stop watching it too for your own health. Well. But then people would be very upset because I, I'm their outlet. They've already given up on it. They rely on me to watch this stuff so they can keep up with what's going on. Uh, I guess. I guess. It's just, this is just, you know, just ridiculously tiring. This, this, this set them up, knock them down. Previous caller, you know, said that too. You know, you get invested. You, you, you want to see, you know, things happen. And then I think they hate, they hate their fans. That's it. Yeah. I believe That's that. That's it. I believe that. All right, I'm going to send you back to All the screening right. room. Thank you, brother. And uh, I'm going to take some more. Right. I'm going to take some more calls here. That's uh, Noah, who does a great job, even though he doesn't listen to a word I say apparently. But he does a great job of screening the calls. Let's take a few more here. We got uh, Andrew. In is it uh, is it Indiana? I believe. Yeah, it's uh, Salisbury, Indiana. How you doing, Andrew? Good. Uh, last time I called in was uh, Extreme Rules. Just a uh, Wanted to call and wish you happy birthday. Thank you very much. So uh, my main point, I'll make it quick and get off here because I know you have other calls to make. Uh, my main question is, uh, how the fuck can any company be this out of touch with their fan base and what their fans want? Like, like that main event was a fucking abomination. Yeah, no, I mean, there, there's no... The thing about it is there's no excuse for them to have a pay-per-view main event set up and clearly they had this set up at least a couple of months in advance remember the advertising leaked so this was not like a sudden decision they knew well in advance that they were going to do this so with months of of preparation or at least several weeks of you know preparation to think about what they were going to do to think that this was the best they can come up with is is mind-boggling to me 
Absolutely mind-boggling to me. James, let's go to uh, James here in uh, California. You're on the air. Hey, Solid Monster. Just want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, James. I have a quick question for you. Um, so after this match, how badly do you think the mystique of The Fiend has been damaged? Um, where do they go from here? Like, who do they book with him next? Does he go against Seth again? Or, like, how can they salvage his image after this? Well, I almost think they have to go with Seth again. This this issue, how could this be over? There was no resolution to it at the end of this match. He put down Seth. He was bleeding all over the place. He left the champion laying. I mean, unless he gets drafted onto a different show, if Fox really wants The Fiend, I've heard rumors that Fox wants The Fiend on their show. Well, I don't think Seth is moving. So the draft could end this. That's what I mean. Everything is in limbo right now until this draft takes place on Friday. Until this draft happens, we just don't know what direction they're going to go in with any of this stuff. But the way that this pay-per-view ended tonight, I don't see how this could be the end. And if they expect to come back with this match again, then they, I, I mean, I could sit here and say I sound like a broken record. You know, they need to change the title. I said that coming into this pay-per-view. So what does it even matter anymore? Beyond Rollins, who else could The Fiend go up against? That's the problem with putting him up against your champion. Your champion is your top guy. Once he's gone in, you know, through the champion and hasn't won the title, he's got nowhere else to go. Finn Balor would have been a, a likely opponent. And Balor's back in NXT, so he's off the table. Yeah, you've got someone like an Aleister Black who's MIA on SmackDown. Maybe Aleister Black is drafted to Raw and they can do something with The Fiend and Aleister Black. Now, if it were up to me, I, I figured he would win the championship. You could draft Black over to Raw, and you could have built to a championship match at WrestleMania between Black and The Fiend. So I hate to kind of blow it off uh, this quickly, but that could be another direction you go in as well. Let's go to Blaine in Texas. Blaine, you're on the air. Hello, i coming in up. Uh, oof, no, you're not, actually. Uh, try calling back, because I'm getting a weird echo here. So let's move on. Let's go to... Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's not go there. That person is uh, over-modulated. Oh, my goodness. We've got so many calls here. I can't possibly get to everybody, but I'm going to try to uh, to get to who I can. We have another Illinois caller on the line. Illinois, you're on the line. Oh, uh, hello. Hi, is this Lori? Well All right, I guess not, so we'll uh, have to drop that. Let's try two more. If this doesn't work, I'm going to wrap up here with some thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to play these games all night. Let's go to Woodside, New York. You're on the air. Hello? Hello, Woodside. Hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm Happy doing, birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, I've been listening to you for a while now. You know, I haven't watched Raw or the pay-per-views or nothing else. Uh, I've been only listening to you. <laughs> so the last thing I was watching is the clips from the last um, ending of um, Hello of a Cell. And I see this guy, um, Seth Rollins, is giving the stomps and shit. And I'm just seeing the finish getting buried. And <laughs> I just don't get it, man. Uh, back in the old days, that you know, the, the golden years, the attitude era, that was the good shit. You know, this era, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't understand this. This is horrible, man. It's it's gotten to a point where it's, it you can't watch it. You know, I wish they well, had a lot of people don't. Story. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I wish a, a lot of. I'm fucking. I'm, I'm fucking pissed. I can't do this shit no more. Nobody can't do this no more, man. I, I really want to watch a good show, man. And I, I've i been looking at this AEW. I kid you not, man. This shit looks like it's hot. The storylines look like they're trying to build something here. And then I was listening to you know Jim Ross in the commentary and bringing back memories for me. So, you know, maybe. We'll see what happens. There's nothing guaranteed because, you know, WWE has been there for so many fucking years. But come on, bro. Like, really? They got to stop with this bullshit. Um, you know, bringing back old wrestlers. You know, it's sad. It's sad. It's fucking sad. But it is what it is. We, 
I miss them. That's fucking wrestling. Yeah. I don't give a shit about flip flips over. You know, you know how they do all these crazy flips in the ring. I don't care about none of that. You care about that, don't you, Jason? Well, I mean, if it's done right, I, not just flips for the sake of doing flips. I mean, then that that's different. That's a whole different thing. But I think you you hit on a good point. I'm going to let you go here, but thank you for the call. You hit on a good point. You know, we're in a period now where they trot out these legends every single week. And they build everything around Saudi Arabia and all these big shows. Because that's where they make the most money. Saudi Arabia is handing them a whole bucket full of money. So we'll just do whatever they want us to do. You want Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair? You got Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. You want Goldberg and The Undertaker? Fine. You got Goldberg and The Undertaker. And it's everything else takes a back seat. The main roster takes a back seat. And this is why people like Corbin and Rollins and all these people... You know, I don't just dump on them for the sake of dumping on them. There's a reason why these people don't come across as cool. Yeah, this guy was just talking about the Attitude Era. How come things were so different back then? Do you think in the Attitude Era that we had clean finishes in every match? We had fuck finishes in matches back then. But somehow, these guys, you know, the core guys, were able to survive it. And it actually enhanced the story or it enhanced their character. It didn't hurt them at all. Austin was cool. Rock was cool. DX was cool. Undertaker was cool. So where's the cool factor? Why, why were things so much cooler back then than they come off as now? Or are we just out of touch? I don't think I'm out of touch. So what's different now about it? Why can't they make their current roster come across like stars? That's the biggest problem. They don't have any stars. The Fiend was the closest thing to this new big star that they had. And I think they can still have. I'm not saying he's dead. Uh, but tonight was a, a very big misfire. But what about the rest of the roster? Why is it like that? Well, maybe if you stop trotting out all the legends that make everybody else look inferior. You had Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair come out on TV last Monday night. Their segment jumped in the ratings over half a million viewers. There was no other segment on the entire show that came even close to that kind of growth. Hulk Hogan and Rick Hulk Hogan, who can barely move, who's about to have his 10th back surgery. Ric Flair, who almost died. Over half a million viewers. And they had Ricochet and Cesaro and all these other people. And, you know, 100,000 viewers turned off. 200,000 viewers turned off. Why? Why don't people want to stick around to watch the new guys? Do the new guys suck? I don't think they suck. So what's the problem here? Is it how they're being portrayed? They don't have stars anymore. And when they have one, and they're right on the cusp of breaking through... They drop the ball and fuck up. And that's one of the things that made me so angry about tonight. They had something. And they fucked it up. Because they don't know what they're doing. It's like they just forgot how to, you know, do what brought them to the dance in the first place. They're just complacent to just coast on their reputation. Nobody comes across as a star anymore. The biggest problem with a Stone Cold or a Rock coming out, as much as I love seeing them, is how inferior... Every single person on that roster looks by comparison. One of the many problems that they have to deal with right now. Let's take a couple more. Let's go to Jose in Manhattan. How's it going, sir? Happy birthday. Thank you very much. It was good seeing you last night at the Hawk Show. Oh, <laughs> did you, uh, I assume you had a good time last night. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, you know, it's, I, it's, I, wait, hold on a second. I assume I assume you had a better time last night than you did watching this pay per view tonight. Man, it was better seeing the show from last night than SmackDown and tonight combined. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking horrible. You know, it's bad. And you know, it's bad when you have X Pac doing the watch along on WWE, and he shits on the on the ending too. Oh, did he? It's I, I didn't crazy. know. I didn't know about that. I did not know that. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, stream still up, and he, yeah, he he shits on the, on the ending. Like, how do you have a DQ at the end of the show? It, it's bad. I and want, everybody else's reaction is priceless. I want somebody <laughs> because I, you know what? They're gonna, I guarantee they're going to take that down. I want somebody to uh, to save that or or clip it before they take it down because I want to see that. Because I guarantee I'll, it. I'll, 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 I'll send you the streamable um, after this. Okay, good. Because yeah, I, gar sure. <laughs> I guarantee you they're going to edit it or they're going to take it down. I want to see that shit before they take that down. Yeah, so so now my question is, I, I deeply think that they're going to take away the scenes from Seth. That shouldn't be the case. But what I think the next, 
and I don't want this to happen. I think the next uh, feud for The Fiend, since the draft is coming up, is probably because now that the feud is over, I think, is probably um, Roman Reigns. What do you think about that? Oh, boy. Roman Reigns and The Fiend. That sounds like bad news for The Fiend. I, I don't feel very good about that at all. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not a fan of that. Because The Fiend, you know, it's still early. He's had two matches on television. So The Fiend is not going to go undefeated for five years. Like, I, I get that. He, you know, at some point he has to lose. He's still brand new. He's still, we're still in the honeymoon phase with this guy. You know, you've got to give him some, some credibility in the ring. That was the problem with Bray Wyatt before. They had a star in Bray Wyatt before The Fiend. And they fucked him up then too. This is their second chance. This is their second try with this guy. So to put him in there with Roman Reigns sounds like a very bad idea to me. Now you could put him in there, let's say, with like a Daniel Bryan. That actually, I think, would not be a bad idea. And I'm sure, you know, him going over on Bryan is uh, is not a big deal. And that actually, I think, could work. If Bryan is back to being a babyface, I could buy into that. I could buy into The Fiend and, and Daniel Bryan. But it would still feel like a, a, a you know, a, a letdown. To go from wrestling for the championship, and he didn't win, and so he just moves on to somebody you know a little further down the card. That's the problem with putting him in a championship match and not having him win. I don't know how many times I could say that going into this pay per view, and I you know I, I'm all out of words. I don't have anything. I've said all I can say about that as far as what they did here tonight. Uh, let's just go to uh, one more, and uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Let's go to Kyle in Texas. You're on the air. Hey, Solomon Monster. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, sir. All right. So tonight was very similar to last year's Hell in a Cell. The same bullshit, screwy DQ finish. And that, that really makes me think, uh, do you think that this year's crown jewel is going to be just as bad as last year if, if history is indeed going to repeat itself since this Hell in a Cell was so goddamn abysmal do you think that crown jewel is going to be just as bad if not worse than tonight well i haven't seen the full card so i can't say for sure but if they're going to have brock lesnar against kane velasquez uh seeing as how kane has had what two matches in his career that doesn't sound like it's going to be very promising uh, i'm sure that'll have to be kept short uh, maybe they'll do Tyson Fury and Braun Strowman. We'll find out maybe tomorrow night if uh, they do that in Saudi Arabia. That it's more of a gimmick. I that could be very very bad, uh, or maybe that won't be as bad as I think it'll be. We don't know what the rest of the card looks like outside of Team Hogan against Team Flair. I think Team Hogan and Team Flair as a match could turn out to be fun, uh, but we don't know the rest of the card. So, but we know one thing: we know how they look at these Saudi Arabia shows, right? as big or bigger than WrestleMania. So we're going to get a WrestleMania-esque card, and uh, it would be hard for them, I think, to screw that up. But uh, then again, we don't know who The Undertaker's going to face, or if he'll even be on the card. I would think he'll probably be on the card in some way. Uh, I lied. Let's do one more. I'm trying to squeeze as many in as I can here, because I know a lot of people are very animated after what happened. Let's go to Elias. I don't know if this is the Elias. That would be kind of funny if it was. Elias calling in to shit on the pay-per-view. Elias in Chicago. Well, uh, I wish I was the actual Elias, but no. Um, yeah, moving moving forward from this ending, I, I honestly do believe they booked themselves into a corner, you know? Uh, but I'll try, I'm trying to think positive. What do you, with the draft coming up, what do you honestly believe they'll do with this draft to kind of reset, I guess the storylines reset what they did here at Hell in a Cell. Well, they've already made their moves as far as the announcers, so we know that that they're pretty much set. They're not going to move. We know Lesnar is on SmackDown. It seems pretty obvious to me they're not going to swap the titles. So Lesnar's on SmackDown now. The Fiend, we don't know. We don't know if the Fiend is going to move. We don't know if Daniel Bryan is going to move. We don't know if Braun Strowman is going to move. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we just have to let it play out as far as uh, what some of the bigger moves they can make. I do think they should call up some talent from NXT. Uh, I've made no bones about the fact that I'm a Matt Riddle guy. I'm a big fan of his work. I think he could be a big star on the main roster. 
And whether you like him or not, they need some more fresh blood. So I could see someone like him going to SmackDown. Uh, maybe they can bring up a couple of women. The women, I think, need a, an injection of new talent in the division. Uh, but beyond that, the, the key with this draft is going to be very simple. And I have absolutely no faith in them to stick to this. They need to keep the rosters exclusive. Brand exclusivity. They have never, ever been good at maintaining brand exclusivity. So you mix the brands. Raw guy shows up on SmackDown and vice versa. And so who cares? So you have a draft. Why should I care? Why should I care? We just went through months of the wildcard rule where these nonsensical rules that made no sense and guys can just show up on TV whatever show they want. No explanation. Just show up. So now they've gotten rid of the wild card. Now they, they, they made fun of their own wild card rule a few weeks ago. Michael calls it no more wild card. Okay. I'm supposed to believe you now that you're going to stick to exclusive brands on each show? But that's, to me, the most important thing. You want this thing to work? You need to maintain exclusive rosters to Raw and SmackDown. And they have not shown me that they know how to properly execute a draft. Which is why I wasn't a fan of it in the first place. Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Do you trust these people to do the draft the right way after what you saw tonight? After what you saw this week? I wouldn't trust these people to babysit my dog. And I don't even have a dog. Let me wrap this up here by just saying this. This pay-per-view tonight was treated like shit from the beginning. They did not put much thought into this. I saw... Was it Meltzer or somebody the other day said, oh, I talked to somebody in WWE and they said, uh, you know, when you see what the card is going to be, it's actually a really good card. Everyone's going to be really impressed, right? Okay. They put no thought into this card. They put no thought. They put no effort into it. They took it for granted. They said, oh, it's October. We have a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. We'll put a card together. Fox is more important. And they're right. Fox is more important than Hell in a Cell. So I agree. But you have a pay-per-view on Sunday. And you announced three matches. The other day they added a fourth. Four matches in advance. We ended up with how many matches tonight? Seven or eight, I think. And so it's no wonder some of those matches like Gable and Corbin. I mean, the, the fans like Chad, but you know they were, they were library silent during some of these matches on this pay-per-view. So they put very minimal effort into this pay-per-view. It was all built around two matches. The Women's Hell in a Cell and the main Hell in a Cell, the, main, the men's Hell in a Cell. That was the selling point of this pay-per-view. Bray Wyatt was in all the advertising. They sent him to news stations. He was doing the weather. Everything was built around that. And WWE right now has competition from AEW, and there's a lot of other wrestling promotions. They're, they're not in jeopardy of losing their standing as the number one promotion in the world. That will never happen. They're too big. They make too much money, and they're too big. They will always be number one when it comes to that. But there was one very interesting story that kind of got lost when the ratings came out for the AEW Dynamite show last week. Dynamite did 1.4 million overnight viewers on TNT. And then they picked up, I think, another 400,000 for the replay uh, and then another 100,000 or so up in Canada. I don't know what they did in the UK. So, you know, that first show was probably seen, I'm going to guess, in total by 2.5 million people all told. Not bad for a debut show. For a company that has never had television before a day in their life. In the demos that came out, the interesting story was, in the 18 to 49 demo that advertisers care about, that's so important to them, they, I believe, doubled what NXT did. But NXT did not lose anything in the demo from the week before. Their their rating was identical. So they did the same number as they did unopposed the week before, but AEW doubled what they did in that demo, and what that shows is that there is a younger audience, or teenagers, or or people in their 20s, who are still out there, who are wrestling fans, who are looking for good professional wrestling, who have been completely turned off to what WWE is offering. They have given up on WWE, I can't tell you how many emails I get from people saying, I don't watch anymore. I listen to you, I listen to this guy and that guy, and I watch your shows, because I either don't have time, or I, I just can't, the product sucks, it's terrible, I can't sit through it, so I listen to you. 
can't tell you how many emails I get like that. And it's cool. I, I mean, it, it makes me feel good, but it makes me pretty depressed in a way because so many people have just said, I'm done. They've thrown their hands up in the air. They've been looking for an alternative. AEW, you know, is that going to be the alternative for them? We'll see. You know, maybe they watch AEW next week and they don't like what they see. So they turn it off. Maybe it turns out to be WWE Lite. But it showed that there are people out there who don't like what WWE is offering them who are there for the taking. And WWE is basically handing these other promotions this audience, this lapsed audience on a silver platter. And it's in part because of stupid, dumb shit decisions like what we saw tonight. They don't, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And they don't care. I think somebody said it the, the right way earlier. It's almost like they resent their fans. So, the lesson tonight is, uh, anybody who has had faith in WWE to do the right thing, they have given you absolutely no reason to have faith. They've squandered that good faith. And they squandered what could have turned out to be a very good pay-per-view tonight. And that's a goddamn shame. I'm out of here. Thank you all for the birthday love. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm happy I was able to spend part of my birthday with all of you. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. Uh, this was uh, therapeutic in some way. But please, again, if you haven't voted in the Twitter poll, let your voice be heard on Twitter. At Solomonster. Poll's going to be up for another few days. Uh, vote in the poll. And again, let WWE know exactly what you thought of that pay-per-view tonight. Apparently, Sean Waltman did. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll see the footage when I hop off here. Uh, but you know it's bad when uh, WWE's doing a watch-along and their own talent is dumping on the finish of the pay-per-view and talking about how horrible it is. Uh, I'll be back for my AEW Dynamite live stream on Wednesday night right back here on the YouTube channel. So please hit the sub button and episode 621 of the Sound Off on all major podcast platforms next Sunday. Oh, let me just flash this real quick too. In the spirit of Halloween, uh, for those of you who actually care, for those of you who are interested, uh, we do have a couple of Halloween-inspired Sound Off shirts up in our store on uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Off. So if you're interested, there it is. Uh, you can go on the website, pick up uh, a shirt or two in the spirit of my favorite holiday, and uh, I would very much appreciate that. So until next time, be well, stay safe. Uh, let's try to forget about what happened tonight, but uh, this was this was horrible. This was really horrible, and it was an insult to every single person who took the time to sit down and watch that pay-per-view tonight. WWE basically said, fuck you, to each and every single person who sat down tonight and watched this show, and was excited about this show, and looking forward to the show, and they showed that they don't give a shit about you. And uh, unless you really fight for it and make yourself very loud and make yourself heard, they don't give a shit what you have to say. Let's prove them otherwise. Let them know exactly what you think. I'll see you next weekend, guys. Take care.